In your picture is my NE0U EZL 160 meter antenna, which has been shown multiple times on this channel. If you look closely, you can see the support line, which is hanging from a tree in the yard of WA0FSE. Speak of the devil, there's George, WA0FSE. Fifth time I've swept this driveway out of leaves. It's my love. I look forward to it every fall. If you look closely, you can see the horizontal section of the EZL, the very end of it. And it's supported by this branch right in here. This broke in the summer of 2021. And believe it or not, I was able to get another support line up there in the fall of 2021 in one shot. This full-size quarter wave has been fantastic, taking me from 15 DXCC before I had it to currently 163 confirmed DXCC on top band. However, the vertical section is only at 53 feet. It's all the further I could get this antenna up. And you always want to improve, right? This is my large cottonwood tree which sits on the south side of my property. It is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 90 feet tall or so. For over a decade, this tree has supported my 80 meter dipole, which is up somewhere around 45 to 50 feet. For many years, I've wanted to put a top end antenna in this tree. However, I felt getting a support line up there would be problematic thanks to these power lines which are right next to the tree. Very dangerous, obviously. What I use to get a support line in the tree is real redneck, but it's available and it works. This old wrist rocket, an ounce and a half fishing sinker, and it's a fishing line. To safely avoid the power lines, I figured what I needed was to be on the other side of the cottonwood and fire a straight vertical shot. After determining I could safely make the attempts to get a support line in the tree, I made several attempts with many failures. The biggest problem early on was using too heavy of a fishing line. I was using 30 pound test versus 10 pound test. And the 30 pound was just too much drag for the ounce and a half sinker. So then I switched to 10 pound test and managed to get a line around this thick branch at 78 feet towards the top of the tree. I then tied off the mass trance support rope to the fishing line and managed to get that around the branch. So I was in business. All I needed to do now was get 135 feet of the smelly up there. What's the smelly? The smelly is Carol's test probe wire, part number C1321.41.01. The reason I call it the smelly is because of very strong odor that this has, especially when it's fresh. So I keep it in this plastic bag and in the garage. The reason we use the smelly for these antennas versus other types of wire is many years ago, Steve NE0U discovered that this particular wire is nicely resistant to the effects of contact with tree branches. I showed this before on a previous video, but it's worth repeating. This is a chunk of my old 160 meter EZL. And this was in contact with a tree branch, and this is the result of putting 1,500 full legal limit watts into it. This is why you use the Smelly. However, one negative about the Smelly is it's not as strong as, say, DX Engineering's premium antenna wire. So if your particular installation is not going to be touching any branches, I would suggest using DX Engineering's premium antenna wire. But if it is going to be touching branches, which is likely in a situation like this, use the Smelly. Oh, even the label smells, but gosh, this is good stuff. With a thousand feet of the smelly in hand, I cut off 135 feet and up the tree it went. So the smelly went up into the tree beautifully, but there was a problem. In an inverted L, you want the vertical section to go as high as possible. And then whatever is left of the driven element, you want to go horizontally also as high as possible. Thus, the inverted L. But that wasn't happening with this tree because of the amount of branches and twigs that were in place, the best I could do was this. My vertical section went up beautifully to 78 feet, but then hooked around a branch and came basically straight back down. So that's what I wound up with. In this image, you can see the amount of twigs and branches I'm dealing with. The only way to get the J section of this antenna horizontal is with a crane. So I present to you the NE0U 160 meter Easy J, an inverted J antenna for 160 meters. No, not a J pole for six meters, an inverted J for 160 meters.
top band. I suppose from a technical viewpoint, this antenna would be considered a folded monopole, which is similar to the DX Commander line of antennas offered by Calum M0MCX. People seem happy with those, so I felt, well, I'll give this a shot. Let's pop the hood on the business end of the inverted J. All we have in there is something real basic. That's a conduit box with an SO239 going to two bolts for the connections. You see an aluminum radio plate, and I have two ground radials, both at about 130 feet or so. And then just to the right here of your picture, you can possibly see the ground rod, which was four foot. And I've got that connected to the radio plate. Let's slide back the PVC that I use to protect the wireman choke ballon, and this is part number 8332. And on here there are a series of ferrite beads which help make our antenna a little bit more productive. Other than that, I just used a simple PVC insulator and a little piece of mass strength rope with some more PVC pounded in the ground to help keep the antenna in place. The coax I'm using is DX Engineering's RG213U. I'll eventually replace this with LMR400, but in the meantime, this is what I had available and I just wanted to see if the antenna would work. Here's a look at one of the two ground radials I have with the EZJ. It runs along the south edge of my property to the west edge where it bends in an L shape to the north, but it's all on my lot. Here's a look at the second ground radio and this one heads towards the east and I want to do the same thing with this as I did with the west ground radio and turn this into an L configuration and keep it on my property, but right now I can't because that place that I'm going to put it is under construction thanks to a broken water main. Not a good sign. Put up an easy J and they send the black helicopters after you. If you look very closely in the center of the frame, you can see the bottom end of the inverted J. I leave quite a bit of slack in the support line for the bottom end of the inverted J, just in case there's any movement up there. Trees are not stationary, they move, so keep that in mind. One concern I have here is, it's possible a tree branch could catch the support line and tear down the antenna. However, here in the suburbs, when you want to work top band, everything's a compromise. Here's a look at an insulator from one leg of my 80 meter dipole. Now this antenna has been damaged and knocked down to tree limb failure multiple times over the year, and that may be one advantage of the inverted J. The fact that it's more vertical than horizontal might make it a little bit less susceptible to those type of problems. My neighbors have always been real good about leaving my antennas alone. And of course this little picket fence around it's not gonna protect it, but it is gonna let people know that it's there. As suggested in the article by NE0U on his 160 meter EZL, for the EZJ, I started with 135 feet of the smelly. I ended up trimming that down to 128 feet as that's where I felt the best resonance was. However, your results may vary. It's best to begin with a longer length, say around 135 feet or so, and then trim that down to tune. Before I do my SWR test, I want to preface it by saying that it's 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. There's no one on 160 meters, so my risk of QRMing anyone is almost zero. We're at the bottom of top band. Let's take a look at the SWR. First of all, send the call sign. Keep it legal. And now a carrier. Looks like about 1.4 to 1 or so. We'll go up to the heart of the CW portion. About 1825 or so. Maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe 1.4 to 1, 1.3 to 1. Go up to FT8. About the same. Now we'll slide up to 1900. Now we should start seeing a little higher number. All right, about 1.7 to 1, 1.6 to 1, somewhere in there, probably 1.7 to 1. And then go up to 1930. Now 2 to 1. So in the heart of the 160 meter band where all the action takes place, vis-a-vis -vis CW and FT8, my SWR curve's looking pretty good. Now let's throw a little power through it. I'm on CW at 1831, sending full legal limit at it, 1.3 to 1 SWR. Beautiful. That good result on the SWR meter tells me that I have a good match between the antenna, the feed line, and the transmitter, and in this case an amplifier. But that does not mean that this is an effective and well-performing antenna. 
I see all sorts of videos on YouTube with antennas that have great SWR, but they're horrible radiators. There's more to an antenna than SWR. It's a good measurement to see where your antenna is, but that does not mean you're getting a signal out, and that's the key. Let's talk antenna interaction. The EZJ is located very close to my aforementioned 80 meter dipole, as they're both supported by the same tree. Now this is a compromised antenna, but then again, everything is a compromise as opposed to say a 130 foot vertical on top band. However, in the suburbs, we do what we can do to get on the air. I don't necessarily know that this video is intended to have you copy this design. It was completely unintended. I wanted to have an inverted L when I shot that support line up in the tree, but that's not the way it worked out. But sometimes you just gotta work with what you got and you can't be afraid to try. As I said when the video started, the EZL has been great, but it's only up at 53 feet. The EZJ, despite its unintended and wonky folded monopole-like design, has a vertical section of 78 feet. That's a gain of 25 feet. I just have to believe that that's going to be a better radiator. So there you have it. The NE0U EZL inspired EZJ, or inverted J for 160 meters. How will it perform? Well, time will tell. Thanks very much for watching in 73 from Whiskey X-Ray Zero Victoria.